Hello all and welcome to another episode of the Contact Script Programmer. We're going to look at 4.2, the UI knob. So we declare it thusly, so declare UI knob and then the dollar sign and we've got the whatever we want to call it. And then in brackets we've got a minimum value, maximum value and the display ratio. So the minimum and maximum values are divided by the display ratio to come out with uh, different variables for purely for display purposes. So our patch today, pretty simple, uh, on initialization we declare a whole ton of knobs, okay, with different, um, different same, same minimum and maximum values, but different display ratios. So even though they're all outputting the same values, they will look like different values. So uh, we'll put this one together first, just so I can show you what that looks like, because it does sound a little more odd than it is. So... Uh, on initialization, we declare a bunch of UI knobs called knob one, uh, zero, one thousand, one step at a time. Um, I'm just going to declare these so that you've got time to write them out as well. If you're faster than me, congratulations. That'd be good. So it's handy because this will give us really, really different looking variables um, because we are dividing by different amounts so you don't always especially when you start plugging this into uh, say cutoff values or or reverb times or something like that that's in the contact editor uh, they won't all have the same linearity about them uh, they may have different kind of values so rather than trying to change the minimum and maximum values around a lot, you could use something like this. So for now we can use these. It's gonna throw open five different display knobs. Uh, my contact seems to be running quite a bit slow today. So if yours does it automatically, good for you. So we can see already we've got zero, 0, 0.0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and negative zero. The reason these are all, they're all zero, but we've got one step at a time, okay? Then we've got 10 steps at a time, but it's still doing them in, that's why we've got the decimal, because we're dividing 1000 by 10 instead of by one. Then next, we've got two decimal places because we're dividing by 100, two decimal places because we're dividing by 20, which is a little bit more odd than the easy split of 10 and the negative because we're divided by negative. So if I go up to say the midway point, 500-ish, we're gonna get 50-ish, 5-ish, 25-ish, and negative 50. Okay, so the negative 50 makes sense because we've got 10 here and the negative 10. And then the 25 makes sense because again, we're dividing that into quarters. Okay, so we're dividing the whole thing into quarters or four sets. So we're going to have the sort of 10 mark, 25, and the max values 50, negative 100, 10, 100, and 1000. Okay, so handy way to start getting some different values out of your knobs based on different display ratios. The other side of uh, the knobs that we're going to have a look at is this that is gonna spit out different note values. Okay, so on initialization, we declare a count variable. We declare an array with 12 elements that's a no called note class. Each of the elements in the array gets assigned a note. So C, D flat, D, E flat, E, F, G flat, G, A flat. I mean, I should have just kept going, but we then declare note names, which is a second array. Okay, with 128, this is going from zero to 127. Okay, then while the counter is less than 128, this is really, really, really common um, and something we'll get into, or we might've already been into it and I can't remember, but these while loops, these counting variables so that we don't have to uh, check for every single value at every single time. We can use the counter variables to step through the array and to check each element for us. It's a really handy way to iterative process. Um, and it's, it's almost like a macro, like a mini macro at this time. We check the note names against count. So count will be zero right at the start. Okay, so it'll take the 
zero or the ith element of note names, which is, sorry, this one here, okay? And that will, it will make that note name equal to the count variable at note class count modulo 12. So modulo being the division and then taking the remainder. So for instance, 12 modulo five would be two with two remainder. So the modulo 12 would be two, okay? Or modulo five would be two. Uh, then we have a count over 12, take two, okay? Now this whole algorithm here is just determining what note we are playing in what octave, okay? So ideally the note names is going to spit out what note we're playing in this note class, modulo 12, by taking the note we have and then doing modulo 12 to it, which will give us what number it is. And then we've got count divided by two, take two, which is gonna give us the octave that we're in, okay? So without this side, it would still work, but we would just have C, F, G flat, whatever. Um, and without this side, it would still work, but it would just give us the octave that we're in. So handy ways to use them if we wanted to create something that changed based on an octave or something that changed based on the sound. We could, for instance, tune all of our Cs down and all of our F sharps up. Uh, if we wanted to do that by using this kind of thing. Once we're done this check, we then increment the counter and we go all the way up to 128. Okay, so for every note we get, we're gonna ping that against this note class modulo 12, and that's gonna give us the note that we're playing and the octave that we're in. From there, we declare a UI knob called note, which has 127 values or 128 values, uh, one step at a time. We set the knob label to be note and then note names with note. So it's going to take the number that we're putting in here. It's going to smash it into there and we're going to run it against the note name. So it's going to pick what note name out of this array here and give us the note name. Make that value persistent. Read the persistent value. Set the knob label for the note Again, so this, this part here is just a persistence check. So uh, for when we're initializing it, it wants to make sure that we're going to start with the same value each time, uh, or at least start with whatever we left it on. So from there, we end that and we start the on UI control, the second half of the UI element side, which is going to set the knob label to be note. And this is just the callback so that we've got the same, uh, the value on the knob label is the same as what the knob is actually doing. Okay, so let's jump in and start building this. It's a bit of a long patch, uh, but it's a really, really handy one to get your head around. So um, I, I think it's a good idea to write these out uh, as always. So we declare a counter variable. We declare a note class with 12 arrays. Um, you can probably uh, copy paste this stuff. Uh, I'm not going to, but you you probably can. Okay, now next up, we're going to declare our note names, uh, which is going to be the 127 because we, or 128 rather, because we need to take our note class and 
make sure that we pick the right octave that it's in. So while we have this counter variable stepping through, we are checking our note names uh, array with the counter variable inside the element ID. So it's going to keep replacing that element ID so it's not 128 all the time. Uh, and the note class, when you're initially starting with this, it can be really, really tricky because you're trying to understand why, uh, how things work, but you're also probably writing out each of these and checking and not running through while loops like this. Um, so if you don't quite get this, that's, that's okay. Uh, we will keep using these while loops a fair bit. So um, if you don't, if you don't get it just yet, that's okay. When we start to get into building really proper um, implemented things, it's something we can have a look at. We then set the knob label. So this is our persistence variable um, and just checking the very first bit uh, where, where it was last, um, where it should be. Notes and read persistent variable notes set the knob label. Watch the caps as well. Bit of a tricky one there. Oops, note names. Uh, notes, there we go. And on. So that's all of that area is just checking what the variable was last and whether or not it should still be that variable, in which case it usually should. And on the UI callback, because the knob does most of the work for us, the UI callback is actually just uh, going to let us drive a knob and check what note that number would be. Um, so when we hit apply, <coughs> just going to start cooking. But as you can see, when I pull my note up and down, it will actually allow me to see what that is. We could even probably put in here a message callback um, that's just going to pop out the note just this way. Um, so that way we can see in the bottom corner what note corresponds to what value. So for instance, A flat 2 is 56. Okay, as we go up to C3, C3 is middle C is always 60. So kind of handy that we've got, well, actually it's really handy that we've got now a note generator that lets us know exactly what MIDI note each thing is. For now, we'll call it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something and uh, I'll see you next time.